Hello and welcome to this reflection from Stretton Vale Baptist Church. Easter has passed. We've celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. We've sung songs of praise. We've danced with joy at knowing Jesus, our saviour, is alive. But that was last week and we've got our ordinary lives to get back to, right? We can put aside our celebrations, leave behind that sense of wonder and just go back to living our lives as we want, staying in our comfortable little bubbles. Except, if we truly believe that Jesus rose again and is alive even now, that changes everything. We cannot just continue with life as usual when we allow the truth of Easter to really hit home. So I'm going to read from Luke 23, 24, rather, um, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our t companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did, the, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. But he was, when he was at the table, he took bread gave thanks, <clears throat> broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how they were how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. So we have the disciples on the Emmaus Road. They were people who had heard some of the rumours of Jesus being alive, but they didn't believe it to be true. And so they began to head back to their ordinary lives. These disciples had witnessed at least some of Jesus' life the miracles he did, the wonderful teaching, the way he lived, his prophecies about what would happen in the future. They witnessed all of this and they believed at the very least that he was a prophet and one who was going to redeem Israel. And yet when Jesus was crucified, their hopes were dashed and they chose to try to return to their old lives, even when rumours had arisen that told them of the hope and good news that Jesus wasn't dead. They allowed their grief and experience of suffering to stop them believing the good news. The tears in their eyes blinded them to the truth of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. They could not possibly believe the reports they had heard from the women and the other disciples because their grief was so immense. Their grief was blinding them to the very thing that could comfort them in their pain. Sometimes suffering causes us to doubt all that we thought we once knew and causes us to close ourselves off from others and even from God. If you're going through suffering at the moment, do not allow it to close your eyes to God's presence, his love, 
and his mercy. It would have been easy for those disciples to have returned home and slotted back into their old lives, never knowing the miracle of the resurrection or the truth of salvation given to us through Jesus. But just like in the parables of the lost coin and the lost sheep, God went in search of them to draw them back into his presence. On their way home, Jesus came up to them and walked with them. In the midst of their grief and suffering, Jesus walked alongside them, giving them comfort. When we are struggling, God walks alongside us too. I know I've told this to people before, but my favourite poem is a beautiful poem called Footprints in the Sand. It tells the story of someone who looks back on their life and sees throughout their life's journey there are two sets of footprints walking side by side. But as the person looks closer, they notice that during the most difficult times in their life, there is only one set of footprints. And so they turn to God and question him why in the most difficult times does he lead them to struggle on alone. The poem ends with these beautiful words. The Lord replied, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never ever during your trials and sufferings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. When you go through trials, allow God to carry you and take your burden. Take time to recognise him when he walks beside you on the dusty road, like Jesus did with the disciples on the Emmaus road. Don't let your pain keep you from recognising Jesus' presence. The reality of Easter changes our lives forever because through Jesus' resurrection, we know that we are never alone or forsaken. Jesus died and rose again so that we could be restored to relationship with God. We will still experience pain and trouble while here on earth, but we can be assured that God comforts us in our pain. And when we are fully re reunited to God in eternity, there will be no more mourning or tears or pain. As the psalmist says in Psalm 30, weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. So don't let Easter just pass by and your life to remain the same. Allow it to change your life forever because rejoicing comes in the morning. So Easter changes our lives forever because Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Our lives are also changed because our purpose, our heart's desire, reorients itself so that instead of pursuing our own selfish desires, our hearts begin to long for the things of God. After Jesus joined the disciples on the road, he taught them about Jesus's plan. Uh, he taught them about God's plan as it is laid out in Scripture. These people had been faithful Jews for their whole lives, but they didn't understand that Jesus and his mission permeates throughout the whole of the Old Testament. As a side note, it's funny how many people try to discount the Old Testament, saying how we now have Jesus and the New Testament and so we don't need to pay attention to what is written in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament is packed full of stories, prophecies, laws, etc. that foreshadow the coming of Christ and was there to help the ancient Jews prepare for and recognise the coming of the Messiah. Yet, as was demonstrated by so many, we are not good at recognising the signs and directions of God, and so many people miss the arrival of the Messiah. Don't allow yourselves to miss God's arrival. So even these disciples on the Emmaus road did not understand what the Messiah came to do. They say to Jesus, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. They had in mind their own desires of what they wanted from a Messiah. Most Jews at that time longed for and expected a Messiah that would overthrow the Roman oppressors and restore Israel to its, be its own sovereign nation. Or, in other words, it was an idea appealing to the human desires of power and control. But God was more concerned with conquering over the power of evil and his, he was more concerned with his desire to restore us to relationship with himself by giving us an opportunity to be cleansed from our sins. The Emmaus Road disciples thought all hope was lost. And in a sense, 
it was if you were pinning your hopes to a bloody political and military regime takeover. But true hope was certainly not lost. True hope shone with glorious brilliance at the resurrection of Christ because now creation could be restored and made new. Easter was a demonstration to those who were willing to see it about God's true purposes for the world. It was a demonstration that God cares not for human power and, ambi and ambition, but instead for the restoration of all people who are willing to accept Jesus' invitation and sacrifice. The disciples on the Emmaus Road soon came to recognise the change in their hearts caused by Jesus' resurrection. Once they realised that Jesus was alive again, and after he disappeared from their sight, the disciples turned to one another to ask, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Once the truth of God's purposes was revealed to them and their selfish desires washed away, they felt their hearts burning with a longing to see God's kingdom come here as it is in heaven. When we understand the amazing reality of the resurrection, our hearts also begin to go through this change in which we develop a longing for God's kingdom, a desire to see God's purposes at work in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Do you have a hunger for the kingdom of God stirring in your heart? How can you continue to fan into flames your passion for the purposes of God? Or has your passion been snuffed out by the ways of the world, the cares and concerns of daily life that tries to sap our commitment to God. How might you take the time to reflect once again on the events of Easter and allow that to reignite the fire inside of you that longs to see God's kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The truth of the resurrection helps us to reorientate our desires so that we long to see God's will rather than our own selfish ideas and will. And the resurrection news needs to be shared so that others, other lives can be changed as well. After the disciples realised who Jesus was and Jesus left them, we're told that they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. As soon as they understood and believed that Jesus was alive, they rushed back to Jerusalem to share the good news with their friends. Now, let's remember, they had only just left Jerusalem. Luke tells us that Jerusalem was about seven miles away, so not an insubstantial distance to walk. I imagine that they would have been quite tired by the time they had got home, having had a seven mile walk coupled with their grief and pain and the exhaustion of the last few days. But upon realising that Jesus was alive, they were re-energised enough that they rushed back to Jerusalem, hurrying the seven miles back the way that they had just come from. We also know that it was already quite late by the time they made it home from Jerusalem, as they had urged Jesus to stay with them, saying, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So if we add in the time for them to have a meal, it would have been well into the evening by the time the disciples realised Jesus was alive. Yet this late hour did not stop them from immediately returning to Jerusalem to tell the others what had happened. For these disciples, the news of Jesus' resurrection was so important that they were not willing to wait even until morning to tell others. They were overcome with a sense of urgency and excitement that they could not wait to pass the news on. In comparison, how do we act to react to the good news of Jesus' resurrection? I don't think it would be unfair of me to say that we do not share that same level of urgency and excitement. Our reactions to the good news of the resurrection have become more inclined to be met with half-hearted celebration, complacency or even apathy. 
But the news of the resurrection truly is the most amazing news ever, because it means more than simply a man coming back to life. There are so many reasons to be excited about the resurrection, so many ways in which it should change our lives forever. There are so many reasons that we should long to share the good news with everyone we can. So let me just suggest a few of the many reasons why the Easter story should change your life. We are justified. Jesus coming back to life confirms that God accepted the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross. It confirms that our sin, our rebellion against God has been paid for. It proves that we now have access to a close personal relationship with God because the chasm caused by our sin has now been filled by Jesus' righteousness. Jesus being raised to life demonstrates that we have been set free from the burden of our sinfulness and instead we have been given the holiness, the righteousness, the goodness of Christ. We have exchanged our dirty, sinful lives for the perfect life of Christ. The resurrection demonstrates that God has accepted that exchange and we can now come boldly before God. Jesus' resurrection proves that he also defeated death, that he is victorious over Satan. Death is a consequence of sin, so Jesus demonstrates his victory over sin by defeating death. This is amazing, not just because it means that Jesus is alive, but also because it means that we no longer need to fear death. Because of the resurrection, Paul proudly proclaims in 1 Corinthians 15, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has defeated death. The resurrection also proves the divinity of Christ. That Jesus truly is the Son of God. In Romans 1, it says his unique identity as son of God was shown by the spirit when Jesus was raised from the dead, setting him apart as the Messiah, our master. So by recognising the resurrection of Christ, we acknowledge Jesus as the son of God, a member of the Trinity. And this gives us so many reasons to celebrate because it proves that God loves us so much that he was willing to come to earth live a human life and die a horrific death to rescue us. It shows that God knows fully what it is to experience life as a human. It gives us reassurance that God can understand what we're going through while still being powerful enough to act and intervene when it is best. And the resurrection proves that everything Jesus said, everything he did, everything he modelled in the way he lived his life, all of that is true. In 1 Corinthians 15 it says, And if tr Christ had not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But it, he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then... Though those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Since Christ is alive, we realise that everything he taught us comes from the mouth of God and is to be listened to and followed. All these reasons and so many more cause us to celebrate Easter and for our lives to be changed. But it should also want us to make want to make us share the news with others so that their lives can be changed too. C.S. Lewis said, Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Christianity is true, and so is of infinite importance. That means that everyone needs to hear the news and understand that it is true. We are called to be witnesses to the amazing news of the resurrection because it is so life-changing. 
the resurrection should be the catalyst to transforming our lives as we reorient ourselves to point towards Jesus. How does Easter change your life? How can you be filled with hope and comfort knowing that Jesus walked with you through difficult times? That his resurrection proves that death is not the end and we can know eternal joy and peace with him? How is the focus of your life changed as you realise that Jesus lives and the spirit dwells in us so that we can see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as in heaven? And how does the joy of the resurrection make you want to share the news with others? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that you did not remain dead, but came alive proving to us that you are God, that you have forgiven our sins, that we are saved because of you, that you are with us always. Lord, help us to allow our lives to be transformed by the truth of the resurrection. Help us not to just go back to our ordinary lives and ignore the wonderful news that you are alive. And allow us to share the good news with those around us so that others will have their lives changed too. Lord, we worship you and we want to see your kingdom come here on earth. So this we pray. Amen. <laughs>